Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco. On this edition of the show, I'm speaking again with Kerry Orefice of Off Grid Knives. Kerry designs some of the finest, coolest, and uh, within reach, hard use knives out there. I'm a huge fan of the knives, and um, I like the fact that Off Grid Knives has a range. Um, so that if you like the designs that Kerry produces and the knives that come from them, you can choose from the elite level to to a more budget level and and get the beautiful designs and the and the high performance uh, out of any of those. I've been showing off a lot of uh, off grid knives recently. I I uh, I have one in particular that I'm absolutely over the moon about. We'll get into that in just a minute. Uh, but before we do, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell uh, so that you. You know, each time a new video is uploaded, I've been putting a lot of uh, uh, close-up videos that I want you to take a look at uh, up on the channel. And uh, and also, consider becoming a patron if you think what we do is worth uh, the time and the money, uh, frankly. And uh, we'd love to have you on board. And once once there, you're entered into a knife giveaway. You get free, um, you get extra interview extras, you know, from these interviews, like the one we're having with Kerry. We're going to talk to him offline for another 10 15 minutes you can hear that conversation if you become a patron so please join us there it's the knife junkie.com slash patreon i will repeat that very long address one more time so you get it it's the knife junkie.com slash patreon do you carry multiple knives then overthink which one to use when an actual cutting chore pops up you're a, you're knife, a knife junkie, junkie of the of first the order carrie welcome back to the show how you doing sir hey bob Great to be back. It's it's been a while since like 2019. Yeah, yeah, 2019 was the first time you came on the show. You did come on Thursday night knives for a yeah. brief announcement a while back. We talked yeah. about the the Grizzly, such an awesome. Oh, I don't have the Grizzly in front of me. I got all of my off-grid knives out for this conversation and left probably the one I used the most. Uh, I love it. I love case. it. Uh, we just traveled, we just carried the Grizzly. If uh, if you all out there don't know which one the Grizzly is, Damn it! I wish I had it with me, uh, but it is the Chef Camp's knife. Uh, Chef Camp knife. It's an amazing uh, tool. So uh, that's long for welcome. <laughs> awesome. Yes, and you took it up camping. You took it to the the cabin, and yep, yep. That was the summer. We just did our winter stint at the same place, and uh, you know, it, it's it's very it's it's lush. It's not really camping, uh, <laughs> but the knives suck. So you got to bring something good. And that's the perfect go. thing because I know if we have to escape through the mountains, I'll just put that on my uh, put that on my hip, and I'm good to go. You're good. A bear comes, you're you're solid. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Well, okay. Before we get into the meat of our conversation, I, I just I want to mention a certain one of your new new ish knives, the Raptor. Oh. I I want to be honest with you. When I saw the Raptor, I was like, he's just trying to be different with that blade. He's just trying to shake things up. It's right. like a a recurve Tanto, but the recurve's in the wrong spot. Right. But when I got this and started using it, I actually saw that this is an incredibly utilitarian design. I thought you were trying to just do something different, but it's, that's not the case. I don't think. Right. I, I had uh, a Hawkbill style uh, blade that I discontinued. And so I wanted to switch it up a little bit and make it slightly more compact, but, but broader or wider. And then having that extra Hawkbill type tip on the end, I always found myself gravitating to that style, especially when I'm opening boxes or, or little things like that. But then to throw the flat straight edge on the bottom, they're just like a one, two punch. And so then, yes, I got a little, you know, a little creative with, with the, with the style and, and, and just wanted to play with it and then throw it out there and see what people, did. It, it was a little risky. I mean, let's be honest. It's not the, the most normal looking knife and uh, people are liking it so far. So, that's good. Well, this is okay. Uh, this is a, a knife that I'd like to make a video. I rarely show me using the knife. Um, uh, I, I did one recently and, and this one I really want to, because I looked at that, um, uh, curve, that Hawkbill tip, yeah. 
if you will, on the on the yeah. front of this knife. And I thought, oh, that would make a great feather sticker. And lo and behold, it is. Yeah. If you have a stick, you know, that, that has yeah. a radius, it doesn't have to be that exact radius. Right. But this actually works really well as a feather sticker. And you were mentioning the broadness. Why right. did you want to make it broad? It's just, it, it, to me, I wanted something behind this edge to look, you know, a lot of what I do, I want it to look cool as well, but mm -hmm. I thought it, it just needed something to show that little extra punch. Mm -hmm. And so I even went a little further than normal, I think we should say. <laughs> well, well, in doing so, I, I think you made it extra slicey, you know, uh, because th this forward curvy tip uh, yep. part if that were uh, a stouter behind the edge it wouldn't have that same effect it'd be awkward right. to kind of figure out what the right angle is this is uh, very intuitive because it's super thin and this uh this long uh, relatively speaking long uh, about two and a half inch portion here that's flat yep. is also extremely thin behind the edge yeah. because you have this very tall bevel there this is a great, great utility. I mean, like if I worked, I used to work at a paint shop, you know, right. and do a lot of warehouse stuff. This would be a great knife for that. Definitely, definitely. And when you look at it, a lot of people, they kind of, what is this? They side eye it. What the heck is that? Then you put it in their hands and they use it every time they love it. Every time. It's like automatic. So I think just that blade shape and like you said, the, the tallness, thinness, and then you have the beefiness of the usual, you know, off-grid beefiness. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, <laughs> the Raptor. It's the Raptor. You're like, you know, it's cool. Yeah, <laughs> it is. And and the, uh, you know, what's neat is, uh, neat. I, you know if I'm using that word. Uh, <laughs> but I love the faceting. Um, you know, you're used, we're used to seeing faceting on a, on a multi, on a, um, whatchamacallit, multi-ground blade, not multi-ground. What am I thinking of? What's that term? Um, compound ground blade. Okay. We're used to seeing facets, and the facets on this are really cool. I mean, they come to a five pointed star basically. <laughs> anyway, uh, I, I think that this is a very cool knife, and I'm surprised because I have to say, um, when you I were saw a skeptic, it, you were I, skeptic. I was a skeptic, I was yeah. a raptor skeptic, but uh, <laughs> and it's got great ergonomics, not for nothing. It's a it's a smallish handle, it's but finger, yeah, yeah, three or three Pretty and much. a half. I have I might have smaller hands than you, but. I get about three and a half fingers, but that round um, butt, ca you know, the round pommel fits, nestles right in there. It's great for a push cuts. Nice. Um, anyway, so I, I just wanted to mention that because I think that this is a, a design that um, might be polarizing, you know, people seeing that like it was with me. And then I got it in hand. I was like, wow. So, right. And now I have to convince people to get it in their hands. That's the, that's the tricky part, but slowly but surely it's, it's gaining popularity. So that's good. Cool. Well, this is one, I, you know, like I said, I am going to do a video on it and it will nice. be honest. I have one beef with the design. I'll tell you since I have you here. I hope you don't oh, mind. Please. Um, and it's it's aesthetic because I'm okay. shallow. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. Uh, but the way the uh, flipper tab. Yes. Misaligns with or it doesn't misalign, but uh, that right there. Yep. I, I'm I, not crazy about. I hear you. I hear you. No, no, no. That that's something that I definitely noticed. It was kind of almost an after, after the fact. It's not a deal breaker by any means, but no, you know, I totally know what you mean. I know. What no, you're it's it's a visual thing. You need it. I've really, I, I actually examined it and looked at it. Yeah. And uh, Carrie, I don't. Uh, you know, uh, when I looked at it, I realized it's got to be that tall exactly. to get that action. And exactly. It's in the perfect place. You know, it's perfect placement for great action. It's got to be that tall. You know, it's got to be what it is. But exactly. It has know. to drop down that far. Exactly. Yeah. 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 But I'm a nerd and I get it. You know, I get really in the weeds. So, I mean, you are the knife junkie. So <laughs> it's in the name. Uh, uh, very light. Also, I mean, OK, I, I love all your knives. We'll get to the rest of them in a minute. But for people who may not have uh, listened to episode 272 or or the first one, uh, you're a man of adventure. Where, where did tell, tell us about how you got into making knives and where your need, where the need came out from your own lifestyle. Yeah. Um, pretty much, uh, if you go back and, you know, as we all do when we're younger, um, there's always a time you're, you're 
eventually there and, and you pick up a knife and you use it and and you there's a fascination but what got me into it was tools in general because my dad always had this really massive uh toolkit and i got into you know uh shaping skim boards you know what a skim board is um is it a surfing? skim board it's 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 like a surfboard but you drop it on the sand and you can slide it onto the sand when the when the water comes up. So when you're younger, it's like a kind of a fun little activity to do. So I started shaping these boards. I needed tools. So I would dive into my dad's toolbox and I would just be fascinated with tools in general. Right. And then there was always a knife sneaking around in there somewhere. And that would always end up in my hand. And then so I would observe the tools from a hammer to a screwdriver to the knife and it all was fascinating to me and then that dovetailed later in my life i started working construction and then every time i was on a construction site i started in high school and uh so i was basically the gopher you know they i'd had to do everything i was at the very bottom and guys would be sending me out to you know get lunch but i was able to be there with all these skilled guys with their you know, so jealous. They had their, uh, their belts on with all the stuff and, and I didn't have that. So I would learn from them and learn how to use these tools. And what happened was I started having so much variety of this. So a hammer, you have one style of hammer and then all of a sudden there's another one and then, a, and then a different style, uh, a different handle, a different shape. And then I started gravitating to that. And once I, had my preference on that it also transferred to knives so i would hmm. prefer the beefier heavier duty tool which is also kind of where the off-grid thing came from that's interesting and abiding uh, you, so you're a tool junkie basically uh my Pretty mother much. my mother my whole family but definitely my mom you know she does she makes jewelry and stuff and she's got her whole um panoply of hammers she's got all these little hammers different kind of hammers and stuff and right. a lot of them she got from her father who did the same thing but right. um like that love of tools it it it, it kind of stands for a self-reliance or something that's true definitely and and then i started collecting you know collecting tools you start buying things that you i mean it's out of control now but i've i have multiple bags of tools from over the years and as you went through, say, like in the 90s and in the early 2000s, a lot of companies uh, started realizing that they could, you know, instead of just putting a normal hammer handle, you could put some finger grooves on there or, you know, spice it up a little bit. And I, oh, there's a new one. And then I would check it out. And and it's the same with knives for me. It's like, you know, you have the handle, you have the shape, you have the ergonomics, and then, you know, it all. And then you have the steel on the, on the top. So it's very similar and that's really the core of of where i get my uh knife um the way i design and what i want you know tough strong you know yeah tough strong um but but also um i mean they're all tough they're all strong but for instance the the cleaver here but right. by the way i made a, a little tiny video of this cleaver people love this thing nice. uh this knife is, uh, you know, you look at it from the side, it looks kind of broad and chunky from, from the blade, but it's so thin. This knife is so thin and slicey it is. that, that it's, but you're right. They're beefy, robust knives, but yes. they don't sacrifice, uh, cutting performance at all. As a matter of fact, uh, this is my observation from the off grid folders. I have, <clears throat> uh, the, this one from the elite series, the scorpion. Yeah. Um, I love this knife. Um, yes. I carry this knife and fiddle with it quite a bit. Nice. Uh, I have noticed, though, this one has the steepest, seems to have the steepest grind. Um, and yes. this is a great cutter. Uh, my whole point being that yeah. you, it seems like um, the, the, the thickest behind the edge knife you have is this scorpion. And it is it is a fantastic performer. So <laughs> I, all I'm trying to say is, yes, we, we hear a uh, uh, hard use, tough build hard. And we right. think of a pry bar, but right. these are very slicey knives in tough bodies. Right. Yeah. And, and definitely I'm glad you said that because that's the whole point. Like I wanted the best of both worlds and I think I try to combine them. And then of course, like I said earlier, I want it to look aesthetically pleasing or, 
you know, make it look cool or make it look badass, you know, stuff yeah. like that. And, um, and, and that's hopefully what I accomplish, you know, and it sounds like you're, you're digging them. So that, you know, that's a, that's a good thing. I am digging them. I've noticed a lot of people are digging them. Um, uh, one recent one, the Cayman people dug the Cayman, oh. dig the Cayman yeah. a lot. Yeah. Uh, it's that, it's that aggressive Bowie blade. Yes. But also it actually looks like a Cayman, it's namesake. Right. Yep. Um Definitely. but the but the one that most I don't know, like people right now are nuts over, myself included, <laughs> and my wife is the baby rhino. Tell us about the inspiration behind this. Well, I think you have the 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 larger blackout uh version um as well. And so there it is. So <clears throat> when you're gonna go uh, to a downsized, scaled down version of a, like an XL ish type type blade. So I, I scaled it down first to like a three inch blade and it just didn't feel it's like if you're going to go to compact, um, I decided to go full baby. Yeah. <laughs> and so I ended up going really small and, and, and really went really compact, but kept the same, you know, width and the thickness and so forth. So it, it's a true replica in a, tiny package and when i got the prototype i flipped it once i went oh yep this is it let's go let's go start the engines um and so but it doesn't matter what i think right it depends what you and everyone else thinks and so hearing that feedback oh makes me so happy because it definitely hit me the same way i was pretty excited because we're used to the bigger knives mm -hmm. you like the bigger knives i like the bigger knives and so this was this was an experiment well i i think one of the one of the ways it translates best okay for me i like the big knives and the small knives the medium knives so many great designs in that in that region they just don't get carried by me much <laughs> um i have them around i use them and stuff but um i either like the really small or the really or or the big and and right. the the interesting thing about the rhino uh baby rhino yeah. and i could be wrong about this but in my video on it i say that it looks as if you put in the computer shrink by whatever percent mm -hmm. which ordinarily does not work in my experience you okay. have to change things right. in the design yeah. to make it fit a hand a hand when it gets smaller right but you chose wisely to keep the same width exactly. this is this baby rhino is the same width right. as this full-size rhino v2 which exactly. is exactly uh 3.75 inch blade it's a big knife right because you kept the width and because you have a decently you know wide or capacious uh clip there you get a full grip with this exactly and it exactly. and you can horse through and and by the way i love this addition of the forward jimping uh on v3 I think you should put the forward jimping there too. It's probably going to happen. It's probably going to happen. Not that I, it's I needed. It's you. a it's a luxury touch. No, no, it's true. I always end up with my thumb up there anyway. So yeah, it's going to happen. So what what do you carry on a regular basis? You know, I've been carrying the baby rhino lately. You know, just it's fun because I have a lot of choices. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a right. lot. And so. Uh, it's interesting to see what I end up picking up and then I'll stick with it for a week and then I'll flip around and switch. But lately I've been stuck on the baby rhino, like you're talking about. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. You like it. Yeah. And uh, so tell me about the choice of the gray G10, the gray right. anodized handle or um, yeah. clip and the blade. Yeah. So we came up the color on the, um, on the handle is a custom color. So I tinkered with colorations and, and things like that. We went back and forth and uh, I even, I named it uh, sky gray. Ooh. Ooh, I like and, that. and so um, that, because I knew that the blade was going to be like a slate gray, which is the, um, which is the, you know, the slate gray from the scorpion. Oh. So, it's got that thing, uh, you know, the, the coating, the DLC. Mm -hmm. And so because I had experience with that color and I, and I, and, and it did get well received with other, uh, models. So people I know like that gray, um, yeah. color. And so 
I just went for it. Plus, if you look <laughs> baby rhino in real life, it's kind of like a they're kind of gray. OK, so it was like, all right, that's it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I think that was a good move. Um, so this is uh, that's DL. That's DLC. Yes. OK. All right. I, so I misspoke in my uh, in my video. I, I said it looked like titanium nitrate, nitrate coating because yes. that's yeah. the only time which I've is seen on nitrate. most which is on most my knives. And now I've been shifting over to DLC. OK. OK. Yeah. Yeah, the the look and and so you chose Sandvik 14C28 and right. a, a favorite steel of mine. Why did you go with this? Well, what's happening is, you know, I got stuck on the D2, the Cryo D2 and I kept doing and it and people were even telling me, you know, you got to branch out and try new things and no doubt about it, it's been on my mind. Once you start the production, it's like, you know, it it by the time that life is ended it takes a while. So the cycle of getting in new steels mm -hmm. takes some time. And so I was really adamant about bringing this into some of the new designs that started fresh. So I'm starting there. Um, and of course, like you said, people have heard so much about it. It's, it's relatively easy to get. It's on, you know, it's, it's more expensive than the D2 and the crowd D2, but relatively close. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't change things in that respect. And so, um, I mean, from corrosion resistance to edge retention, um, all of it, it's just, as you said, it's a great slicey, excellent steel. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's it just fits um, off-grid perfectly. Yeah, it's it's very loved. People love that it's steel. Cool. Um, mm -hmm. You know, some of the selling us not, uh, the Kershaw leak and and the the, yeah. the onion here, that onion yeah. series are all. Uh, right. 14c but also uh recently a lot of like civivi and and a lot of uh other brands have been using it to to great effect it's it's yeah. awesome yeah. and it's like just an just an ingot steel you know? <laughs> um but but i'm curious why you chose it over 154 which is what you have here which is also one of my favorite steels right and so now of course you go to 154 cm price is going to jump and right. really what that came down to feedback people wanted the rhino in a better steel right they wanted a little more high end and i would ask this simple question all right the price is going to go up are you going to still going to buy it and it would, every person said absolutely let's go and so uh i wanted to have the baby rhino um to be a little more affordable and i wanted to use the the sand 14 c 28 n and then for the big rhino that I've had D2 for quite some time, let's, you know, juice that up and put some 154 CM. So. Oh, okay. So that's part of the V2 of this is that yes. it's, oh, okay. Yes. So my brother, I can go to my brother and be like, you have the D2 version. Yes. I have the 154. <laughs> yes. So now you have to get the 154 version. <laughs> and, and the thing that I know you talk about. So on my older first run um, editions, some of the screws, the pocket screws, are sitting up okay yep, 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 and yep. you'll bring it up and say why why did he do this on this one and did it on the other well <laughs> like i said once that process is started you can't stop yeah. and then you have to wait for that to flush out and then from this point forward i can assure you all my knives are going to be just flush with the with the scales every time so you won't see <laughs> that funny. so if you have the screws that are raised you know you have like an earlier version i got you that oh that's so great to hear because uh, that makes total sense now that i'm hearing it of course things take uh, you're dealing with with oem manufacturers it's oh. not like you're uh you're snapping your fingers and they appear oh. they're 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 on these long cycles yes and, and now um you know i'm not the first person to bring up flat screws and recess <laughs> clips it's what people obsess over so i show I people and uh man that's funny because it takes a while to turn that ship or to get exactly. you know exactly and it drives me crazy because i want it done now and i have to wait month after yeah. month after month so um but no the new ones are going to be all as you'll notice with the new stuff that you've got yeah i think uh pretty much yeah uh, pretty much everything i have well no yeah. some of the older ones but yeah uh actually i think it's just the scorpion God, yeah, this, so this thing is cool. So that is the original Wii version. That was the first run Wii version. And so I have now shifted all production for my Elite series to Best Tech. 
Nice. You know, and and I know like like Vero, he he does um, he uses Best Tech. And when I saw that he went into, uh, and I was I was already had a great relationship with Best Tech. Yeah. And I saw the confidence that he had in them to go into that into that uh, world. I was it gave me a little boost to say, all right, let's give it a shot. And I transferred everything over to them. I, I can't. So th- like I said, or like you said, this is the Wii version. I can't wait to check out the Best Tech version. I've been. I've been kind of beating this drum recently, uh, yeah. not not too stridently, but I feel like Best Tech um, is is like I, I consider their OEM work up there with Riot. I, I I mean I don't know. Like in other words, I got my Vero engineering knife at the right. at the Blade Show, and I took it home, and I was I, I assumed it was Riot. You know, right? I know, uh, and it's so damn good. I know, I know. So. That was really that boost where I said, okay, I can, I can do this because we is now so big that, mm. you know, a little company like mine just kind of was getting a little brush to the side. And I said, I got to make a change. So best tech was already there. And they said, absolutely. We can do that. I saw Vero doing it. And I said, let's go. And so I'll show you, this was the, um, yeah. the matrix blackout version and so that's copper and um, copper and uh, carbon fiber. Oh, cool! And um, and so you'll see, oh, you see the the screws are flush. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, yeah. So that, these are fan- these are fantastic. You know. Nice. So um, people, you, they, you won't have torches and pitchforks at your door for the for the. <laughs> Right. So I, I when I when those came out, I was very excited, um, <clears throat> and I didn't realize that they were from a different uh, manufacturer. But I did I did see how special they look. Uh, I think it was two two new um, versions of this: the one with the copper, and then the one with the gray blade. And yeah, I've got um, you know here's here's one that's just basically a blackout, and then I you know added this uh, satin accent mm. up here which is um, called the nitro. Um, and then I have the uh, the blackout, which you saw. And then I have, um, let's see, another one that's the gray with the satin oh, yeah. accent. So there's actually six of them. Oh, nice. So I came out with six of those. But there's one that you, you haven't held before, I don't think, which is the black mamba. Have you? No. Okay. Oh, this is like the enforcer, but uh, I'm sorry. It's, go ahead. It's the enforcer. You're absolutely right. So uh, it's been, a lot of people were saying I want the Black Mamba in a bigger um, in a bigger package, and then I kind of went a little crazy with the enforcer and at, and made it like super rough, as you know, like the the grip and the um, and the glass breaker mm-hmm. and the robustness of that knife is is insane and. I had to reorder immediately because they sold that fast. People wow. love the Enforcer XL um, and they love the XL in general. But this guy, I I did a, mm. uh, the original Black Mamba was by Wii. This went to uh, Best Tech. And so um, they did a fantastic job at this. So I was able to do some things such as the, you know, the yep. pocket clip. And, uh, keep it per- re- relatively the same. I dropped the weight a little bit, which was nice. And people are really, really digging it. So you dropped the weight. Is that through internal milling and external milling? There are a lot yes. of divots. I see a little bit. And then the, the, I think we took just a hair off the scales a little mm-hmm. bit, the titanium. And um, it just kind of came out that way. And I was, I was pretty happy. It was closer to five ounces and now it's closer to four. So uh, when you first, when I first saw your knives, I don't know, five years ago or something, four or five, four, it uh, was 2016. The, yeah. 2000. It was the black Mamba. That was the first thing I remember seeing. I remember the divots on the top of the blade. Yes. And I remember cool. the worn clip and be like, oh, what's this? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so this so, is this is one of your stalwarts. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's one of those little mini, it's small, tactical. And um love that. Very happy with, I mean, people, people love it. So, 
that one eventually you got to put this one in your hand i think you're gonna like it maybe uh, maybe you'll get one on your doorstep who knows or or, or maybe you'll find an order for one how about that <laughs> That's that is a that is a beaut. That's the black mamba. Yeah, the black mamba. Okay, so that was the V2 version, by the way. That's V2. Yeah. So something I noticed, yeah, uh, is the difference between. So I was mentioning before we uh, we started rolling here that after our first interview, my dad said, "I want to get my boys an off grid knife," and and I chose one for my brother and I chose one for myself. It was a Christmas present. Yeah. And I chose the the blackout backcountry, right. mm-hmm. which is I, I I am so in love with that blade shape. Yes. I just think it's so cool. And this this is the the early one, maybe the V1, and it's got a hollow ground blade, and yes. it's black, and it's got this uh, Anzo pattern right. on the scales. And a great knife. I love this knife, and it also has double sentimental meaning, you right. know, to it. Yeah. Um, but then you sent me this very kindly. Thank you yep. very much. Yep. And it's it's not a different knife, but my God, it is m- way more comfortable. It feels m- way more comfortable. Yes. And something about this just seems like it. A it, little more refined. Yes. Yes. What did, what did you do? Well, because we had already done a couple runs of, and by the way, these knives right here, I have a story behind it, but the, the backcountry knives, uh, fixed blades. Mm-hmm. Um, I have the two, right? The blackout that you just showed and the coyote. Those are actually replicas from the rapid fire series. So that is the rapid fire coyote in a fixed blade body. Okay. And so that's really what it is, but I didn't want to say rapid fire fixed blade and go into that. So I just tried to do it, but it looks more of a tactical fighting combat military knife, doesn't it? It does. I mean, that's so why. why did I call it the backcountry? And I'll tell you why. So <laughs> listen to this. So I sell a lot of my products on Amazon. I mean, that's where the bulk is. And now my website is growing amazingly well. And I'm trying to eat into Amazon because Good. it's Amazon. And I'll tell you <laughs> how annoying they can be. So if you even put the word combat on a listing or fighting knife or tactical sometimes Mm. they will pull your knife off the shelf. And all of a sudden one day I realize my listing is gone. I have to go through, talk to them. And then you get people denying and saying it can never come back ever. And then I fight and I fight and it takes sometimes a month to get it back on. If I say it's a camping knife, if I say it's, uh, you know, something like that. So yeah. I said, okay, people can buy it and you can call it whatever you want. If you want to make it your combat military knife, <laughs> make it your combat military knife. So that's kind of really the story behind it. Cause I wanted to make it, I think I heard you say, call it the back alley. The back alley. Right? Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, that's so good. <laughs> that's so good. It's like so, you could you you could call it turtle dove petunia pie, but <laughs> but it doesn't doesn't change no, the fact that it's no. this. Now at the same time it can be a camp knife definitely. Oh sure. Well, but the look of it is is very aggressive like the rapid fires <laughs> and it has <laughs> that more tactical feel. But really that's the story behind the semi marketing behind it that I was kind of doing a Amazon hack. Basically. Oh, that that is that is hila- not hilarious. It's brilliant, and and I love that because really the knife sells itself. The name doesn't right. sell it. <laughs> right, uh, right. But but so let's talk about some of the design refinements. Uh, sure. The original, uh, the blackout backcountry. Now I don't know if the blackout still has this handle. Does it? The Anzo. It does. It has okay. the Anzo. Yeah. Okay. So so my observation is that for my hand, uh, like I mentioned before, it's a medium size hand. This one feels better. I think it's slightly more contoured in it cross is. section. Slightly, yeah. But it's also this network of elongated hexagons. Yeah, they're just comfortable, and and yeah. you know, it, it just feels pleasing. And you uh, handled the rapid fire coyote too. Yes, and those are, that's identical uh, scale. As okay. The, yeah, as as the rabbit. But I think because the sides are a little more knocked down, like you said, a little more refined. Mm-hmm. It, it is there. There was a little, you know, it's got the cryo D2. The other one doesn't, I don't, I don't think the, the, the other run, I think it just says D2. Oh, okay. yeah. And so we put a little more, uh, you know, once you get one knife under your belt and then you go back into it again, even though that's yeah. slightly different, 
you kind of you refine it and that's kind of how that that happened at well, the same of, time, people are still digging, still digging the blackout. That's for sure. Oh, I love the blackout. Yeah. Like, uh, I, I don't, I don't have a favorite, though. I, I, to my hand, I think this one feels better oh. in mm -hmm. hand. But I, I find myself because this. <clears throat> all right. The long story is when my wife and I lived in New York uh, City, we had knives all over the apartment and stashed, and you know, before we had kids okay. in different places, and and this fits that role in our house got it uh, this is so i this this gets picked up and right. reminded you know i this gets picked up a bit um, right so it is comfortable and i do love it but um one thing i did notice about this that the sharpeners uh nerds will love is the sharpening choil you added uh, was that due to um like that's a very nice yeah. sharpening choil on the coyote it, is that is that something that came from feedback or is that something that you noticed? That was own? me. It drove me crazy that it wasn't on the other one. It mm. really did. It was one of those things. It went into production and I went, wait. And uh, even something as small as that, I wanted to change it. And, um, you know, future runs will have that. But yeah, exactly. It's just one of those things. Um, that and that's why the new one I got to do all the things that I wanted to do. Right, right. Oh God, I, both of these are cool, and they're they're actually. <laughs> if you get one, you need to get the other. It's kind of like getting a cat, you know. <laughs> right. Um, but why did you go to the flat grind? Um, that's that's one thing about the blackout that I like better is I, I'm a sucker for a hollow grind. Right. What uh, what encouraged or what uh, inspired you to do? It was this really flat? it was the, when we were going back in and discussing it. It was actually you know this is made in Taiwan, and so uh, super knowledgeable. They're great, and we we bounce ideas off each other all the time. And that was actually their suggestion. I went all right. You know you guys you you know what you're doing, and and that's really what it comes down to. And so uh, I thought, and and it's a little different. Why not? And and it's a it it's um they both cut very well. Uh it is a robust, more robust, I guess, uh edge geometry if you can take this out and baton it or do crazy right. stuff like that. But yeah, uh I, either one, it, you got a razor sharp blade with a recurve. So uh you know, I don't know, I don't know what you more you want, that. but you yeah, love exactly. that. <laughs> we love that. Yeah. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about the difference. Uh, there are the different challenges you encounter in designing um, a fixed blade versus a um, a folder. And this is a great way of looking at it because these two are, are similar, might even they're, they're similar, but to me, they fill different roles. Um, right. Uh, but so what are the what are the challenges and what are the uh, you know, obviously these are related. What? Yeah, definitely. You know, that cleaver style that that i i made for the cleaver v2 the folder mm -hmm. um is is i think i write on even on the website i talk about just i i've always loved the cleaver blade in the kitchen mm -hmm. and in general and when i started seeing uh you know well before um off grid started i was i love uh the folding cleavers but you didn't see many of them they mm -hmm. just didn't really exist as much and so it was just one of those niche type styles that i wanted to tinker with and and give it a shot and see how it goes i made one early it was a spring spring assisted so uh back in 2016 2017 i had a spring assisted one and it sold really really well i phased it out because i just wanted to switch it up and then i kind of pushed cleavers out for about a year or two and then i said i'm going to go back to the cleaver <laughs> even though a lot of companies abandon the cleaver for the most part like there was kind of a period where it was super hot yeah right and i'm yeah. like you know i don't care i'm just going to do it and so i i made the folder and then i wanted to go deep finger choil because a lot of companies do this dinky little choil yeah and granted yes no matter what you put your finger on a choil you're going to have that blade close but that's a deep choil right there it's it's deep. It fits my finger very very. I mean, I'm squeezing as hard as I can, right? And I, and I don't feel the the sharp. I feel like you could fit another uh, eighth <laughs> of an inch or fifty a sixteenth of an inch of fat in there. Yeah, easily, easily. Yeah. So when I got the prototype, it, it wasn't big enough, and I said, just go bigger on the choil, and and we kept refining the choil until it was big enough where 
you know, I just felt it was, it makes sense. That's all. You know. So when you look at these two knives, I'm just going to use these as an example. Um, you know, you can see obvious differences, but there, there are obvious similarities as well. There yeah. one, one is a, um, a, a small EDC fixed blade shaped like a, a curved cleaver. And the other is a, a little straighter EDC. Right. Uh, they look somewhat similar this way, but like tropical fish, when you turn them <laughs> forward like this, you see yeah. that the fixed blade uh, in keeping with the fact that it might be used for tougher tasks as mm -hmm. it's a fixed blade mm -hmm. is much uh, wider and yeah. uh, ax like Right. And uh, and I'm being dramatic. It's not axe like it's very sharp and keen, but I mean, yeah. it has a more wedge like Robust. shape, whereas this yeah. one is like paper thin. Exactly. So I wanted it a slicey. This, I wanted this to be super slicey because it's we knew it would be tall. Mm -hmm. And so you'd have plenty of room to really make it slicey and then come to that little where it jets out just a little bit. And that gives you where when you're going to go down and cut, even if you're opening a box, you know, it'll pierce it, boom, and slice right through. So that's another one that I'll pick up as well. And I end up having that in my pocket uh, often. Yeah, this, like. is, this is a great utility design. Yeah. And, and something I mentioned in my video, one of the videos where I feature this, <clears throat> I talk about how I love the point on this. That's yeah. the one thing that turns me off from cleaver blades. Ultimately, I like the way they look. And then I'm like, yeah, but I like a point. Right. I definitely like a point. And even with a with a squared off 90 degree cleaver you can use that point but right. i like to see a point i also yeah. like to be able to you know <laughs> if you had to <laughs> yeah press, and so i, I didn't point. i didn't want to go too far mm -hmm. but I, you, I didn't want to come straight down like a normal cleaver so just uh, just enough where it gives you that almost a tactical also feel i don't know yeah approaches a warren cliff approaches it hints yes. it hints at warren cliff it does it but does. It, it stays firmly in the cleaver camp and yeah. then lastly uh, the thing I have to mention is I love the swedge on this knife. Nice. Yeah, that yeah. forward swedge. It comes down. It comes to the tip. It keeps it a little stronger at the tip because, you know, that's going to get a lot of use. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then <clears throat> on both of these knives, you tip your hat to the traditional cleaver with the hole yes. at the at the front. Yeah, it's funny. Some people go, what did, what, what's the hole there? It looks it looks like a cleaver. It's very yeah, simple. It's a cleaver. It just looks cool. <laughs> so you can hang it over your cutting board. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So when you're designing these, uh, uh, very same but very different. What are the kind of what challenges do you encounter in doing, say, a folder versus the fixed blade? You know, it's uh, folders tend to be a little more uh, finicky, obviously, because you just have more moving parts. <laughs> um, the fixed blade is just a simpler knife. And, and I just have found that by the time I start from prototype or drawing it, CAD prototype and so forth, I tend to make more changes on the folders than I do with the, um, fixed blade. So it's easier with the fixed blades, maybe time-wise, mm -hmm. but, um, that's really the difference. I think just the folders give you a little more, uh, they're a little trickier for sure. Well, I do want to show you something. I think this is this is the DeMarco special right here. Okay? <laughs> I here. love that. Right? <laughs> this. Oh, <laughs> oh my. Land. Oh, I saw this the other day. Yes. I just post a picture of this. Yes. So it is uh, it's called the Stinger XL. It's a prototype. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's um, it'll be coming out. And so I, I've been wanting to do kind of a spear point XL. So this is the same size as the Enforcer XL. So it's a monster. Mm, mm, and mm. so it, it's it's a big boy. So and it fills the hand and it's got that menacing spear point, God. super thin on both sides. It's not a double edge, but it's it's yeah. thin on the on on the spine. Right. And then I have this big ramp, let's see right here where your thumb can land and I'm going to add some jimping up there and so forth. But um, but it's it's a monster, and I thought you would like that. You know, that like is <laughs> so cool. That is so cool. Can, can you turn it around so I can see the show side? Oh, that's cool. I like that milling up towards the bolster area. That the overall profile of the handle looks like the Enforcer XL, but it looks like it the is. surface treatment is contoured and smooth and very it's much smooth. different. Yes. So we we did the opposite on this one, and it's um, yeah. 
So I and think- that that bayonet grind is absolutely gorgeous. That's a beautiful knife, man. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I definitely yeah. wanted to show you that one. I wasn't sure if you saw it on uh, Instagram, but yeah, that's that that one I like. And then I have a fixed blade that's coming. If you want to check this out, Ooh, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. called the uh, Ridgeback. You may have seen it on Instagram. Yes, I, I have seen this so one. This is oh. a prototype. So I haven't done a, it's so bright. I haven't done a Scandi uh, grind and that's what this is. And so it's a bushcraft knife. It's called the Ridgeback and it's got a micarta handle. Hmm. And so it's something that's long enough, you know, a lot of times with the, with the, um, uh, 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 bushcraft knives. Oh, wait, don't put it away. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you the the oh. other version here. Okay. So this one might reflect better. Oh, I see. Yeah. So this one has a little bluer handle. So I'm gonna have kind of a blackish or more black handle and then some blue on it as well. So this looks really nice. Um, uh, it looks like that's a very nice contour, like a very um hand filling handle and yes. that's that's what you want from something like this this is uh not a covert knife you're slipping under your your no. jacket this is a no. this is something you want to hold on to while you're but something that we see on uh, while you're doing wood work and other kind of outdoor tasks yeah uh, one thing i see on this that i really like that you don't see on a lot of knives like this is a little bit of jimping on the top yes um, so it's it's called the ridgeback um and you know which which is a a dog i have a story yeah. behind it i don't know if i should oh yeah let's hear it <laughs> so i i always want to make a knife and call it the ridgeback and then this is this is it but um i wanted it bushcraft uh, the ridgeback dog is like a hunting retriever dog so a hunter goes out shoots the duck boom runs and gets it and they're just and they have the ridges on their on their back and they're they're just really cool dogs so i had an encounter with a real uh ridgeback i was on the beach and I'm, we're just throwing the football around a couple friends and we're chucking it pretty far and and doing that sort of thing and there was a dog coming up the beach and it was a ridgeback and his name was buzz okay buzz launch i didn't know but came up behind me Hit me on my ass. Oh my god! And locked on, and I'm yelling and screaming. I'm wrestling. I had a dog fight. Oh okay, I had a dog fight. <laughs> and so, so we're wrestling. Around. I grab a thing, and I'm to, and he takes off running. And I said, "Gosh, Buzz, that Ridgeback." And so <laughs> it always stayed with me because oh it was uh, it was pretty funny. Everyone was a little worried, and I saw the owner and. It wasn't good. It wasn't good. Oh my god! Well, those Ridgebacks, Rhodesian Ridgebacks, they're they're bred to fight lions. They're bred I, to hunt lions. I know. Yes, it was fierce. So, I was so, like, so you should take that as a compliment, my man. He's like, I'm, I'm taking that lion down. You're just there throwing the football. So it was, it was, it was an all out war. Oh so anyway, I just so so I gotta ask. I gotta ask. Did you have a hospital? Did you have to go to the hospital for that? That sounds like a nasty. I I definitely was bleeding, no doubt. And it also, you know, he bit me on my arm, the whole thing. But no, oh I didn't God. go to the. Yeah, it was That's it was terrifying, a man. That's terrifying. Yeah. I mean, we're <laughs> laughing about it now, but I, you know, I know. have a big animal like that attacking you, man. It's funny now, but yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. anyway, and the dog was known in the in the area as being, you know, a real menace. And uh, well, I found out so. Yeah, yeah, I think the the appropriate name was Buzz Kill. <laughs> Sorry, that was low hanging fruit. I, I had like to reach it. for it. <laughs> I like it. That's good. So, yeah, uh, yeah. since the last time you were on here, uh, before by the way, I I misspoke. Uh, you were on episode one sixty four. I, okay. I said something in the two hundreds, um, but uh, since episode one sixty four, that was a long time ago. That was pre uh, all this nonsense, pre pre pandemic. How has your experience in this industry changed in that period of time yeah so after we timing mean, geez it then went into to 2020 and then the when the pandemic hit obviously when everybody hunkered down and everybody and they made everybody you know stay home and you know flatten the curve all that stuff mm-hmm. and everyone locked up what did they do they went online and what do knife guys do they start browsing the knives and our sales definitely increased during COVID. So that in, in that respect for us, selfishly speaking, 
that worked out, but it just means more people in the brand. It just means more people coming and, and putting it in their hand and then telling a friend and, and growing, growing the brand. And that, and that's pretty awesome. So it did explode in that respect. And I think it, it made a difference. So there was this giant leap through 2020 that snowballed and it just kept right. COVID just kept going through 2021, even though it wasn't as full lockdown as 2020, uh, 2021, still people stayed home. Still people were working from home and all that. Mm -hmm. And the sales, I think everyone that I've talked to who sells online and, and that's their core business all had a boost. I mean, it's pretty obvious that's, that's what happened. People are home, they shop, they shop online, they go to Amazon, they found my website. And so that worked out in, in that respect. And so then 2021 hit all the goals. It was fantastic. So I'm like really happy where the company has gone. So it's really light years from the last time we talked as far as, you know, how many people are in the brand who've bought a knife. We, we have a, a growing list. And then in the knife community online, everybody's been so great. And uh, from the very beginning, and that's really cool. And so all in all, it's amazing. And super lucky and and it's rolling and i'm just going to try and keep growing it little by little uh well from the start you know when i first started noticing you way back with the black mamba on instagram uh and on and another folder i can't remember what it was but my initial impression was one of um like sounds corny but quality like i'm like okay i i saw the i saw the name Mm -hmm. I saw the logo. I, I like both. And you have the American flag in your logo. Right, right. I like the off-grid concept. Now I know I know what that means for you. Right. Uh -huh. um, but it means similar or, you know, things for everybody. Right. right. And right. then and then seeing the work, it's uh, seeing the knives themselves, um, you know, I did, and, and, and how serious knife people immediately uh, were interested and were immediately uh, getting them like uh, I knew that this was the product of someone who loves knives. I mean, you're a lifetime knife collector, right? Yes, definitely. I mean, it's, it's a passion. I mean, uh, anyone who buys a knife, they're passionate about it. And that's really this whole uh, industry of, of, you know, the makers and the buyers, just everybody is just uh, so passionate. And that's really the key to, uh, any business really if you can find a business where people are passionate about what you make one you're, you're going to enjoy it and two you're going to do well you know it's yeah. going to grow okay so um w as we look into the future we've been talking about uh, the recent past and how performance has has shifted to even better because it seems like you're doing pretty damn well before um what what are you looking for in the future in terms of the kind of things you want to make i know you're you're killing it with your folders and you've got some cool fixed blades. Uh, what is, what is the fantasy knife that Kerry Orifice <laughs> is going to make before he uh, hands it off to the kids or, or however that goes? Right. I, that that's tricky. I mean, I, what would be really in a perfect world, you know, it's really um, I'm limited by, you know, we're a small company and I have to be very strategic at this point and I can't go wild with my designs and try all these new things. And so it's step by step. But in, in general, I want to go into higher end steels hmm. and I don't want to go too far out of the price range. And so I'm I, in my mind, I always want to make sure I'm giving value uh, as much as I can and and. And I don't know if that's going to, you know, I go into the 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 super, super steals and the prices go absolutely crazy. I mean, look at Benchmade, right? They go up mm -hmm. into the, you know, 300 and, and up. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying not to go up into that range. However, I would like to dabble in there and, and see how it goes because then you can really refine it. It better be really refined yeah. because you are charge, charging top dollar. So that in, in also, you know, you have all these, um, 
Tamascus, right? Mm -hmm. That's something that's on my mind that I would want to maybe dabble with maybe in the Scorpion series or something like that. And all these things cost a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's, it's a balancing act of trying to keep things progressing and not stalling the business on one really expensive design. And, and at the same time, trying to, to grow and, and it's, it's, it's tricky. It is. Yeah. But I think I'm getting to that point where I can maybe start to experiment into the, the, the really major steals. I mean, uh, intuitively, it seems like you did it right coming out with uh, D2, 154CM, 14C28N on these awesome designs uh -huh. and using the designs as the platform to show off what off-grid has to offer. And then you can start moving in steels as like sprint runs or whatever. Right. Um, but but I, but I what I'm saying is I think it's smart that you didn't start off with a super steel. Uh, I was speaking with Sam Abdel Rahman of uh, uh, Damn Designs. Very cool guy. Makes very damned cool designs. Uh, but when he first started, he was M390 and titanium. And right. uh, people were loving his designs. But he noticed, you know, it's expensive. So he was like, I have all of these designs right. in my mind that I'd like to produce. Why don't I come back out right. and do it in materials that are more within reach to the average knife buyer? And then my designs will be able to um, <clears throat> promulgate out into the you know right. knife world and and so basically he he kind of had he took a step back to right and, and I started lower and started and started going higher exactly yeah yeah, yeah. and and I think you'll both you know, both get you to the same place but I sure. I think starting where you started that was a great idea um, I also I of course I also understand where Sam was coming from people love their titanium and their mm -hmm. M three ninety but like you were saying it's a delicate balance because. When you're new, you're untested and definitely, you know, you don't know, you don't know. Yeah. And look, I started with, I, I talked about this in the first video. It's like one knife and a tactical pen, something that I could simple, simple and something easy to ship and, and started there and it sold out. And then you go to the next step and then you make another knife. And it really was one knife at a time mm -hmm. from 2016 to now. And I'm probably going to have, you know, geez, probably 50 knives, uh, you know, by the middle of this year or something like wow. that. Wow. Damn. Yeah. 50 models. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. And I've, and I've discontinued like, gosh, 20, something like that is crazy. So <laughs> I'm just, awesome. it's, 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 you know, super busy, obviously, but you know, when you're passionate about it, you want to, you want to grow it. But when you get the feedback, like I've been getting, and I hear you talking about it and the community talking about it and, you know, the sales are coming in and I want to pour it back in and make it better. That's, that's what it's all about. And so that's what I'm trying to do. All right, Carrie. So as we close here, uh, give the aspiring knife designers out there uh, who want to be where you are, give them a tidbit of advice yeah, uh, so they could become your competition. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, that, that's, that's the thing. When I started, I said, why would somebody buy my knife? You could just go over to Spyderco. You could just go over to Benchmade or, or CRKT, whatever. And you don't know until you throw your line in the water. And so if you feel like you have something, and it could be anything super simple, it doesn't matter. If you simply put it out there into the market and you are persistent, that's the key. And you're going to run into problems. And when you run into a problem, you have to just figure it out and not quit and all that. And I don't want to sound like Tony Robbins, <laughs> but, but you know what I mean? It's like, you have to throw your line in the water. You'll never know otherwise. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of what I did. And when it sold out, it was like light bulb moment. And that's what I think people would do if they have a knife. They and and you have the tools right now. It's ridiculous. So yeah. I have people from Italy, Germany, uh, the Ukraine, Taiwan, China. I mean, all over the world that all contribute to off grid. And you have that at your fingertips right on the internet. And so, it, and software and tools and it just it's endless. And it's not just knives. Like if you want to go and start a product, any product, and right now is the time to do it. It is. Uh, it, all your tools are there if you just go and, and dig them up. 
nothing ventured, nothing gained, as they say. Yeah, true. <laughs> well, Carrie, man, it's a pleasure catching up with you as always. Uh, I hope you uh, uh, drop in on us uh, Thursday night knives sometime in the near future, like you did recently. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, um, as was this conversation. Thanks again for coming on the show. I think what you're doing is awesome. Thank you. I had a blast. Thank you. My pleasure. Take care, sir. All right. Do you like the sound of the alphanumeric combinations M390, 204P, and 20CV, but bristle at 8CR13MOV and AUS-8? You are a knife junkie. Probably worse. There he goes. Kerry Orefice of Off Grid Knives. Always love talking with Kerry. Um, man, I, I like where he where he comes from we've talked about his past uh adventures we didn't get to any adventures this time but uh uh this guy is not just designing knives in a vacuum he's got a wealth of experience uh that he draws from and so it's exciting to have his knives on hand and uh well, this is the one I've been carrying the most recently. This and its baby brother. So check them out. That's Off Grid Knives. Also, check out the other great interviews we do here on the show. Also, we have the Wednesday uh, Supplemental Edition, where we also uh, pepper in interviews. Uh, and then Thursday Night Knives, where you get to join the conversation. And of course, check out us here on these podcast apps, Apple, Google, iHeart, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, and a whole host of others. Uh, so for Jim, working his magic. Behind the switcher, my name is Bob DeMarco, saying until next time, please don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm -hmm.